Today's task is to get my, well, not so classic Mini through its MOT. It's a Rover Mini MPI, it's is Cooper Sport. Um, it's my daily driver, really. Um, it's, I, think it's either, I think it's registered 2001. It was made in 2000, it's one of the very last. What we're going to do now is we're going to do ball joints and track at end and brake pads and discs since they were just so cheap. So the first thing you want to do, probably with the wheel on or a windy gun, I tend to leave the wheel on and pop the centre cap out and get a brake bar to crack this nut for your drive shaft so that allows us to take the hub off. We then have to undo obviously the top and bottom ball joints which we want to change. The track at end. But before you obviously before you undo the top nut on the track end, make sure you undo the lock nut on your adjuster. And count the turns you take it off so you're somewhere near when you get your tracking done. You want to take our brake caliper off and that's about it until the hub's on the bench. Then we'll separate the flange from the disc and probably set up the ball joints, which obviously we'll go into. You may notice the change of scenery. I decided to do this on the driveway at home as a nice little after work project. But Obviously, even in the middle of summer, I didn't account for the fact it would rain all the time. So this is a little break in the weather we've got, so I think we'll try and do it now. Right, a little crown. Although it's not essential for doing the ball joints, we're going to take the pads out because it'll make it a lot easier to change. Obviously, once we come to build it back up because they'll be out, pistons will be back. That'll save a little bit of time. We don't have to be too careful with these split pins because we do have new ones. But if you don't, obviously, it's always best to save them. Good job I've got the fitting kit, because that should be one piece, not three. Obviously it's important not to let your caliper hang on your brake flexi, so I tend to cable tie them to a, some special suspension component, whatever's there, you know. Let's so we'll get to it. The caliper's held on by two 9 bolts at the back here. And spring washers, so if you change them, it's probably best to change the spring washers as well. And if you're feeling really generous, add a bit of Loctite or something. With a caliper off, I might as well reposition the camera and go take the tracker end off. And I might as well take the brake disc and dry flange off so you can get a better look. So you've got your drive shaft there. So you're hoping you're bearing, so I'll all just pull off and we'll get it ready. Undo the lock nut.
that freed off. And I'll concentrate on the ball joints themselves. Top one cracked off, and now we'll do the bottom one. Now it's just a matter of taking the hub off. And there you have it. This one's a bottom ball joint. This one isn't actually that bad, it's still not great, but the top one was given as my play. But they come in sets of two anyway, so we'd have to change one, not the other. I am also doing the other side, just to make it hand out as best. Um, first step, the first thing to do is to, which I've already done, is to take the grease nipple out of there because that's actually what holds your lock tab into place. And then our next step is to bend the lock tab back down. Do that all the way around, any bits that's still sticking up. Next, we'll undo this nut, which also acts as the top part of the cone. Try and take this up in stages to get the best to give you the best sort of idea. First part you take off is the top nut and cone, which are all one piece. There you go. Next is obviously our ball joint and threaded end. Next is our, I don't even really know what they call this piece, but it's a piece it rides on. Now the top won't have these, only the bottom. But oh, just jumped out there. And that's your spring. There. As well as this, we have the shims. This is what you used to set the preload. There's four in here. And we'll measure them, see what's that, and see if we can get it down with our new one. And finally, we'll have the lock tab. Next step is to clean all of this gunk out of our ball joint. Most importantly, Gotta make sure our grease nipple and grease weighs clear, which this one is, but it's got some quite a lot of old, heavy, dirty grease in there. So it's best to make sure that's cleaned out. And obviously, clean where just clean all the mate and faces, really. Make sure there's no rags or anything on there, and just get it all clean.
just a couple of little sharp edges on the inside I'm going to try and get her off. So on this back edge you can't see very well. But Someone previous to me has decided to assemble it with a hammer. Lovely. There's a couple of little sharp edges on the inside as well I'm going to try and get while I'm here. Obviously not taking too much metal but enough to get the rust away and the surface clean. With all the parts greased and loosely reassembled we'll now start the process of setting it up. And the way I like to do it, which isn't the only way to do it, you could just do trial and error, but this for me gives you a nice little starting point. I like to tighten this down without any shims down, without any shims on to the point where it won't move I like to then back it off see with the socket and bar until the point where it feels nice it feels like a nice nice movement not too stiff no tight spots you know and then I can use a feeler blade and I'll measure the gap between the lock washer and the bottom of that nut and that'll give her a nice starting point and I mean it's never works full time first time sorry but it gives you a nice idea what you're going to be working with. Which is a nice way of doing the job. I just want to that. Right. Obviously, way too tight. So we'll back it off a little bit. Still too tight. Back it off a little bit more. Too loose. It a bit. Getting there. Perfect. We'll now take our feeler blades. Give a quick clean up first. It's always important to store your feeler blades, I think, with a bit of oil on, stop them from rusting and sticking together and the like. And we'll go from this side here, and we want to get the feeler blade all the way through so we can touch the threads. We'll start with a, what we've got here, 12 thou. Bit slack still. So we'll move up one. 13, still a bit slack, 15, we'll try 15 and a 5. Feels good. And that's in a four thou. So we'll try and get eighteen thou with the shims and see if my little trick worked. And by the time you tighten it, it was proper torque set and you tend to have lost a little bit. But it's a nice little starting point. So we've got an 11 thou and a 7 thou shim. So we'll pop them on. Board joint and nut on. If this works first time, I might start filming everything. Now with 
dumb nut, according to the manual, wants to be a hundred and two newton meters, which is seventy five foot pounds. Too tight. That's a shame, but it was expected. So now we'll do the trick again. Back it off till it feels better. Too slack in my lighting. Perfect. Now we'll do the same again with a feeler blade. Let's see what we can get. Right. I just say get a 3 thou feeler blade in there so I think we'll have to find the thinnest shim we've got and see if we can make it in. Now the, thin the thinnest shim I can find is 4 thou which is a little bit bigger than we want but hopefully once we get it all nipped down, it might take a little bit extra clearance up. Perfect. Simple as that. And obviously, when you put it on the car, you want your dust cover on the top, grease nipple in, lock tab folded over, and obviously you fix it to the bottom on top on. And the torque setting, in case you're wondering, for the swivel hub to suspension arm is 54 newton meters or 40 foot pounds. Now, I'm not going to film this putting it back together. Um, it's obviously just the opposite of taking it apart. Actually, it's quite not easy. You don't have to break the ball joint tapers. But that's all there is to it. What I will mention while I'm here, I've had a lot of people contacting us. Have you given up on the Esprit? Is the, have you sold the Esprit? No. I've been mega busy recently. I haven't really had a chance to get down to my dad's place to do anything to it. Um, I've ordered some new poly bushes, I've ordered some updated Bilstein suspension from Lotus so there'll be a little video of that when that cut when well when I get round to making the little video obviously there'll be a video of us fitting it and we'll put the bushes in, sandblast the arms, paint the arms, everything looks nice probably stone chip the underneath of the wheel arch like it was from the factory do all that sort of stuff but like I said I've just been busy and unfortunately I just had to take a back seat which is a shame because I'm really looking forward to using it and fixing it but there's plenty of time I mean the worst thing we can do is rush it and make a half arse job of it the Mini unfortunately did take priority because this is what I use every day and I do need an MOT but I alternate between this Mini and a Land Rover but the Mini is what I enjoy driving this time of year and I've had it since I was 16 so it's quite a special little car but that's where we stand with the Lotus I haven't given up, I haven't forgot about it, I haven't given it on the channel 
I just simply have no time to do it, which is which is a real shame because I enjoy making the videos. I hope you enjoy watching the videos. But other things take priority, unfortunately. I think that's part of growing up, which is a shame. I'm only 22 and I've got a job. Um, well, I restore cars anyway, so that's quite good. I enjoy going to work. But responsibilities, obviously I need to go to work to get paid to put the money into these projects we're doing. But when we're quieting down a bit, which we usually do around probably back end of this month, end of next month, we're quieting down a bit. Hopefully we'll get to see a lot more videos. Thanks for watching this little video. Hope you enjoyed it. You might, If you're lucky, you might get a video on doing the rear drums, which I'm going to do next, which will be a nice little easy video to make. But simple as that, I'll just get this, but I'll get the top one done. Um, I'll get it assembled, put the new tractor end on, put my new discs and pads on. Simple as that. Thanks for watching.